I've marked on the uh, underside here, I've, well I've routed out here with the router um, space all around the side here just so it'll sit down into the mouse tabernacle base uh, without being sort of distorted out of place by the welds. And I've also cut out here, I've marked from, from inside, once I slide that inside, mark the position where the, the bolts are going to bolt down the tabernacle onto the uh, cabin top are going to be. So I'm just cutting these out now. I've used the drill to drill out. Well, I cut slots across first of all, cut full width across, and then I drilled out where the ends are, and then drilled in horizontally here. And now I'm just cleaning these out using the, just using the, the wood chisel and uh, just trimming them out. And I've done the other side, and I'm just working on this side here now. So this HDP plastic wood tools pretty much work with it. And no real damage to the tools, they're fine. It's no no worse than using them on wood. In fact, it's probably a little bit easier because it, it kind of has lubricating qualities, this um, plastic stuff. So if you have access to a CNC machine or a milling machine, you can make this out of HDP plastic and make it very pretty. But I don't. And I've used that spoke shave and that chisel and electric router and a uh, handsaw to cut it out. And uh, I've made that, which is going to do the job just fine. Maybe not as pretty as a CNC cut one, but definitely functional. So previously I was going to uh, make this um, spacer for the mass tabernacle by gluing these two pieces together and then cutting it to shape. Now that worked up until a point where it didn't work. So I got them glued together, which was fine. And I marked it and started cutting it out, and I was cutting it using the handsaw, cutting it on one side, it was going absolutely fantastic, couldn't believe how good it went, and carried on sawing away. But then I started to, to smell the glue, and I wondered what was going on. And then I realised that on the other side, it actually the saw blade had not cut with the material, it had taken the path of least resistance, and ended up in between the two pieces that I glued together. So needless to say, that didn't work. And once I started to separate the two with the saw, I didn't feel happy to you know, continue using that because anything I was going to do after that was going to be kind of a bodge job, trying to glue back two pieces together that were, you know, after being coming broken apart. So that's not going to happen. So what I've got then is I've got a heavier piece of the same material which I'm going to use instead. And I just have to cut it to the, the diagonal shape that I'm going to use for this. I still have this one here intact, which I can use for my template for marking out my holes for the mast uh, tabernacle. So it's not a complete loss. Um, it would have been nice to get it done in one go. But, you know, it just goes to show you that uh, things don't always work out. And that's just the reality of it. And uh, there's no point in me, you know, hiding that and saying, oh, yeah, it worked fine because it just didn't. And when you go to do a job on your boat or whatever project you're working on and it doesn't go fine, that's just the way it goes. Things happen like that, you just have to get past it and try and come up with a better solution and make it work. That's just it. So there's no point sugarcoating it and messing about and, and you know trying to give the illusion that every time I do something it works out fine because that only makes other people watching this think, oh well, how come he doesn't, there's never any problems, and when I do it, it all turns to crap. Well, sometimes it turns to crap, and that's how you learn. And you, you, know, you improve on what you tried to do before, and the solution you come up with is better than what you originally proposed to do. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this as my template, and then I'm going to have to mark out the, the angle on this. And I'm probably not going to use the hand, so what I'm probably going to try and do is use this new chop saw here in some way. Either get it working, flipped up the other way, or try to use it as a chop saw, attach this to some piece of wood to give me a bit of a safety barrier that I'm not physically hand holding onto it. And uh, use that to, you know, start the cut on, on, on the side and, and get it going and work from there. I marked this uh, block of HDP plastic out and uh, cut it using the chop saw, using some pretty sketchy uh, technique. But I'm a big grown-up fella, so I took my chances and, and assessed the risk and the, uh, the ease of chopping and cutting it to, a, to pretty much a, a rough cut-out shape. 
and took that chance. I didn't video it because I don't want other people saying to me, oh you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do that. But that's what I did and if you choose to do that then that's your choice too. So I have a little bit of chopped up polythene here. And uh, two pieces which turned out pretty pretty good. This is the piece I'm using here, this is the waste piece. As you can see, you can see the cuts of the saw. I'm going to have to shape that down. But it was a hell of a lot quicker than trying to cut it by hand with the saw and ending up with probably a really a rougher, rough cut piece. This is, is pretty neat, as you can see. And uh, it just needs basic amount of finishing on it. So, to me it made sense to do it that way. And uh, you don't have to do it that way. Maybe you've got a, um, some other kind of saw that's more suitable for doing it, some kind of a, um, a band saw or something. If you have, that's great. I don't. Right, that's enough of that. So this is the piece I'm going to be using and I have to transfer the marks for that for the tabernacle bolts through onto that. But uh, for the moment I'm just going to leave this now, have a cut out roughed out and I'm going to try it on the boat. It's uh, pouring rain outside at the moment once again so I'm not going out to try it at the moment. I'll try it when it stops raining and then proceed from there. I'm going to try it first of all and check my angle of the tabernacle and make sure it's sitting where I want it before I go any further with it because there's no point in drilling out holes and stuff and then having to start trimming this some more so that's what I'm going to do. Well that's the mass step uh, just dry fit in place. another little project I'm helping somebody out on uh, framing up an old motorhome that the, somebody started doing a refit on it and just abandoned it and the whole framing was all collapsed the roof was all sagging it was all twisted out of square so I've squared it up and I'm sort of halfway through framing it and uh, I put, this, put a floor section in the back of that and I'm going to shoot this out the same right to the front uh, just been clearing out all the fittings and fixtures and stuff and then framing out the, the roof part. So still the front to do. You can see there it's all sort of twisted. I'm going to straighten it up as I go. Well here's another day spent at this. Got more framing done around the back and the back panel exterior back panel put in. have to kind of window open on that but that's going to wait until a bit later on. And then did more up into this front section here and framed out here there's going to be like a, a bed up there. Just framing at the front and then the rear of it's going to be plywood covered over the opening of the cab there. Okay, so that brings to the end of another episode. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. 
If you haven't already done so, subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you next time.